gonna need some caffeine for this one, boys. So I saw a video called The Realest Natty or Not Video Ever Made. And I actually think this is a great title as long as you replaced the realist with most cynical. In that case, I think it's uh, spot on. So we're gonna go over his 10 ways how to spot a fake natural and see if I strongly or somewhat agree or disagree. You might be surprised at some of the points that he has raised and where we might actually be in agreement. Now his first point is that it is plastered all over their social media. So people who are claiming to be natural in their bio, in their videos, in their descriptions, etc. Now I actually strongly disagree because if you are natural, what are you supposed to do? Just never ever mention it? If people ask you in the comments, hey, are you natural? Are you supposed to just ignore that? Because if you claim natural, people will think you're not natural because that's exactly what a fake netty would do? No, that's ridiculous. There's a reason why people claim natural because most people consuming fitness content are natural and they want to know if the person they're following is actually natural. Why? Because steroids make a very, very big difference in the results you can get as well as the training process. And your natural status, it does matter. If it didn't matter, you wouldn't have made that video or we wouldn't be talking about this at all. So it is very important and steroids do make a significant difference and that's why people talk about it because they want to let people know, yeah, I built this naturally, which takes way longer and is way more difficult than attaining the same thing with steroids. And if someone accuses me of being a fake natural, I will always defend myself. If I see it on Instagram, on YouTube, anywhere, I will always say, no, I am natural. Because if I don't, and people see that comment with no response to it, they think, okay, well, he's not addressing it. He must have something to hide. He must be a fake natural. So if you respond, you're a fake natural. If you don't respond, you're a fake natural. There's no way to win. And he's right in that there is no way to prove that you are natural. You get a blood test, people say, oh, you just went off cycle. You go, go to a competition, you take a drug test there, oh, you, you must have cycled off, maybe you photoshopped it, etc. There's no way to actually prove that you're natural short of whipping out your sack on the internet. That would certainly settle the debate, but at a significant cost to the YouTube channel. And I get it, you've been burned. You followed this guy who said he was natural, and then it turned out he wasn't, and you feel like shit, and you don't want to trust anyone else, that's fine, but just know that not everyone is a lying, scamming, scummy piece of shit, right? Maybe some people are, but not everyone. Next, number two. The person makes it a moral issue. Now, I strongly disagree in that if you were doing this, it wouldn't be a sign that you're a fake natural. I don't agree with that stance. I don't think it's a moral issue. I think it's a practical issue. I think most people taking them are not doing it to push the limits of what they could achieve with steroids. They're pushing the limits of what they could achieve without steroids. And so they're sacrificing their health to get gains gotten that they could have gotten naturally. And that just seems like a really lazy and short-sighted roll of the dice. And so, yeah, I think it's a bad decision for the vast majority of people. But if someone is a professional athlete, if they're all about that life, if they have a good base of training naturally and they really want to push things, hey, your life to live, it's a victimless crime in my opinion, as long as you're not deceiving people. And so, hey, fair play in that case. But that's not the vast majority of people taking steroids. Most people are taking them to get natty gains, which is crazy. So I agree it's not a moral issue, but why would someone taking that strong of a stand against PEDs be a sign that they're on PEDs? I've never really seen that to be the case. I've never seen someone who is like fervently against it and then it's like, oh wait, actually I'm taking them. I mean, maybe that might occasionally happen, but for me that wouldn't be a red flag. Three, they are friendly with other fakes. Now I actually somewhat agree with this. The company you keep is extremely important and birds of a feather, they do flock towards the syringe together and often you see one guy go on and then everyone else seems to blow up and you're like okay hmm, something's going on here what are the odds that the one guy in there is still natural maybe i don't think you should be completely guilty by association but yeah there is a red flag there for sure that being said if you have really low standards for what is naturally achievable and you think oh fake natural fake natural fake natural but they're actually natural you might think someone is guilty by association when they're actually just associating with other natural. So standards are very, very important here, as we'll see later. Number four, 
is that you are getting eye-popping physique changes in a very fast time frame. Now, I somewhat agree with this one as well. I see all these Hollywood transformations, and I think a lot of the physiques are actually naturally attainable. Not all of them, but some of them. But they did it in like three months. And they're talking about, yeah, I was eating 4,000, 5,000 calories a day, and they got shredded. Like, they're just so full of shit, and they can't talk about it because they are contractually obligated. So they sort of disguise it with, oh, yeah, the diet is so important, or they're showing their, their training, which usually sucks. It's some, by some Hollywood trainer who has no idea what the fuck he's doing. No, they're just taking a whole bunch of drugs, and that's what is really causing the transformation. So, yeah, if it's a matter of months and they look like a totally different person... Yeah, that's a big red flag. But I think that you can do a lot in a short time, especially if it is fat loss. Like if you go from, say, 22% body fat down to 8% body fat, yeah, you might look ridiculous, completely different. You might look way bigger under the right lighting, etc. But it wasn't really muscle growth. It was just fat loss, which can happen fairly quickly. But on the whole, I agree. If I see some 19-year-old corn-fed bro who is bigger than me and has been lifting two years oh my god i mean how i mean do you just have the best genetics in the world and you know what you're doing but then you see they're trending and it's clear they have no idea what the fuck they're doing so yeah i think in that case pretty clear indicator of peds i've been lifting nine and a half years be 10 years pretty soon and this does take time to find out what works for you finding your training formula if you will and this is not an overnight thing and even if you take steroids and get that physique you want, it usually doesn't last anyway. Check in with these arm goblins in 10 years. They're probably not even going to be lifting. Number five. If somebody is ripped all the time. I somewhat agree with this. Now, I don't maintain a shredded physique. One guy commented on my last video, oh, you're shredded year round. But he didn't realize the footage I was using at the beginning of that video was from 10 months ago. Basically the one time that I was shredded. So... I think for most people, they're not going to be able to maintain a shredded physique, especially if they are natural, and make good progress. But I think for some people, if they're naturally lean, and if they've already built the vast majority of muscle that they're going to build, they could probably maintain near 10%, perhaps even just below 10% in some cases. And as long as you have discipline, that might be possible for some people. I think a lot of what crashes the hormones is the way down. It's the dieting phase that really takes it out of you. And I actually felt pretty good on my diet until roughly the last month when I was going below 10%. So I think 10, 11, 12% is possible for a lot of people to maintain. It just might be difficult to make gains on that type of situation. And I know Revival is a big fan of bulking and cutting, as am I. I've highlighted his channel in the past, which is makes it kind of all the more sad and pathetic that he's calling me out a little bit of a backstabbing stabbing type of vibe but uh yeah we both are proponents of bulking and cutting and i think that's the best way for most natural lifters and yeah if i see someone who is shredded especially if that they have that red liver king look red flag i'm actually surprised he didn't talk about side effects really much in this video but yeah acne that's a big one gyno especially if they didn't have it before you look back at their pictures a year ago no gyno and then now they have gyno and they look completely different. Mm, yeah, big red flag. Looking red everywhere, having this just bloated, inflated, red vascular look. That's, just, that's what most people thought about with, with Liver King, right? It wasn't as much the physique as just the, the tomato. By the way, this video is sponsored by Boost Camp. They are the only sponsor I have ever had on the channel, despite hundreds and hundreds of applications to my inbox, which is very annoying, because they are absolutely fantastic. They are a way to track your progress in the gym, and it also gives you access to some of the best fitness programs out there. If you want to get jacked, if you want to get stronger, lots of programs out there, and the vast majority of them, including all of mine, are absolutely free. So you can check out Rampage, Ravage, my recovering power lifter program. They will treat you right. And thank you to Boost Camp for sponsoring this video. Number six. They start hitting crazy PRs reliably and very, very quickly. You could also call this very big swings in their gym performance. I agree with this one. If you see someone and they look wildly different than they did just a few months ago, Mm, big red flag. Again, bulking and cutting can maybe do this, especially if you're cutting. I mean, you can lose a lot of fat in two months and you will look quite different. But yeah, if the gains are muscular, 
for losses are muscular, it's probably going on or off cycle. Again, Hollywood celebrities, they get in shape for a role and they look massively different. To me, that's a huge red flag. So I agree. Number seven. Somebody randomly disappears from the gym and then they come back. Now, if I had to come up with a list of 10 things, this would never have been on it because I hadn't even really considered it. But yeah, I guess if someone has a social media presence and they sort of go in the dark for a few months... That is a little bit weird, especially if your livelihood is tied to being on social media. So I would think something is going on there. Maybe they have an injury, maybe mental health, creating content can be tough. But yeah, if this coincides with looking totally different, agree, big red flag. Number eight, and this is a big one. This is part of the reason I got tagged in these posts a ton. One has become very controversial with the rise of hypertrophy cell culture, but it is very true. It is being big, but weak. Now, I somewhat disagree. I remember watching one guy at my old gym, dumbbell rowing 10 kilos, 22 pounds. And I thought, he's pretty developed. He's pretty big. Why is he using such baby weights? And, and the answer was probably steroids. I think that if someone is using the pink dumbbells, they're using just absurdly light weights, and they're grunting and they're groaning, and they're like, oh, it burns so much. Uh, I, I, I don't see how that training would be effective as a natural. However, what Revival Fitness does is he seems to think that strength is only squat, bench, deadlift, one rep max. By those metrics, my squat, bench, deadlift of 350 pounds, 250 pounds, 450 pounds, yeah, I would say that's a little suspect, but those are all like three to six years old. Yeah, those PRs are quite old, they are quite soft, and I'm sure I could do better if I really wanted to. Why don't I? Because it's not my goal. Revival, not everyone shares your goals. And projecting your goals onto other people is the height of stupidity. And strong muscle groups tend to correlate with your best lifts. Oh look, I can dumbbell curl this 60 pound dumbbells for many, many reps. And my biceps are big. Wow, shocking, amazing. Why would you judge someone based on their bench press or squat or deadlift one rep max when they don't even do those lifts? Idiotic. And my 100 pound dumbbell incline bench presses, it's not amazing, but it's also not terrible. It's about what you would expect from my level of chesticle development. And so Revival, if you want to learn about hypertrophy training, how to do it in a way that is effective and gets you so big that you get steroid accusations, I actually have a number of really, really informative and awesome books that you might benefit from. You know, these will actually teach you how to get the results that you want from your training instead of focusing on something that is not your training. And so when you achieve those goals, they don't actually correlate with the goals you want to get. And so when other people get the goals you want to get, you get pissed off at them. The books, they'll help. Because around here, we earn our fake natural accusations. So in summary, my strength matches my size. It's just not the strength you're looking for. These aren't the lifts you're looking for. These aren't the lifts we're looking for. Number nine. They do a high volume, high frequency, and high intensity all at the same time. So I assume by intensity you mean effort, Proximity to failure, RAR, RPE, RA, that kind of thing, and not percentage of one rep max. Now, I somewhat disagree with this one. So if I'm training harder than you, closer to failure, or beyond failure, if I'm training more frequently than you, and if I'm doing more sets than you, how is that possible? Well, maybe I'm setting up my training better. Maybe I'm choosing lifts that are better for hypertrophy. If you're dumping all of your volume into squat, bench, deadlift, well, you're probably gonna have some issues with frequency, with effort and proximity to failure, and with the volume of training that you can do. Again, books. And one of the comments on the video, GVS now claims that he has become so big because he has very high work capacity, which allows him to train more and longer, which got him so big. Yeah, so now in 2024, Saying being in good shape helps you recover is now apparently controversial. Amazing. Some people, if you show them exactly what they need to do in order to maximize the results, if it's cardio, they're like, oh, no, uh, tell me something else. Tell me anything. 
That being said, I only somewhat disagree because my volume is lower now than it has been in the past. In 2018, 2019, it was absurdly high. This one when volume was trending, the Schoenfeld studies, 45 sets per muscle group per week, etc. My volume was ridiculously high back then. In 2021, 22, it was fairly high, lower than that, but, but still pretty high. And then now it's even lower than it was before. Typically, I'm more like two to four sets per exercise, whereas before it was like four, five, six, seven, even more sets per movement. And yeah, I'm progressing better now with more modest and moderate volume. Number 10. They make a living and gain influence from their physique. Now, I somewhat disagree with this one because there is a grain of truth. You do see these guys on Instagram, on TikTok, and all they have to offer are pictures and videos of their physique. Everything is just them posing under the good lighting, rah, nothing else. No entertainment, no education, maybe the occasional vapid caption, a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step, and as I'm like with the most muscular. Okay, well, all you have to offer is your physique, and it's very competitive on these hyper-visual platforms. And so in order to make it with only your physique, yeah, you're probably going to have to be on something. But that's not all you can offer as a fitness content creator. Education, entertainment, access to good information, editing, blah, blah, blah. Clearly, you know, I'm clearly I'm out to make millions with my with my setup here. And so the logic is if you could make more money by taking steroids, well, of course you would take steroids. Well, Revival Fitness, I hate to break it to you, but not everyone is willing to sacrifice their health and longevity to make more money. That is just such a fucking pathetic take. The idea that, oh, if they can make more money, of course they'd do it. They must be afraid of needles if they're not juicing it up. They would hop on their first cycle if they knew where to get it and if they weren't scared of needles. That's a fact. Cut him down. You fucking kidding me? What a stupid, pathetic way of thinking. That's honestly sad. So yeah, apparently I am sacrificing my health and taking a bunch of drugs in order to maximize the amount of money I'm making, but I've only ever had one sponsor, who are fantastic by the way, no affiliate links, apart from that one sponsor, no product reviews, no unboxings, which are basically just advertisements by the way, no links to any supplement companies, no channel memberships, no Patreon, again these are fine, they're just not something I've done, no course, no $100 to $200 ebooks, not on TikTok, not on threads, I barely post on Instagram anymore, I mostly post stories, not exactly going to blow up the account with stories, those are just for you guys to help you guys with your training and share what I'm doing. I don't stuff a million fucking irrelevant keywords in my description. I do Q&A videos, which are not going to blow up the channel. I do Q&A sessions on Instagram as well. Those are not going to help my following at all. It's just going to help my followers. I don't even ask you to like the video, but I must be juicing it up in order to make the most amount of money possible. Show us on the doll where life touched you. The main reason I'm making this video is not to defend myself. It's to defend the idea that not everyone is on steroids. Not everyone is a lying, scammy, scummy piece of shit. Cynicism is pernicious. It's contagious. Young guys are going to see this video and think, oh, well, everybody's on steroids. And that's just not true. They're going to think everyone is just out for themselves to make as much money as possible. And that simply is not true. There are plenty of good people in the fitness industry, natural or otherwise. Not everyone is willing to do those things to get ahead. And you should be skeptical. You should think for yourself. But this kind of content really does damage with the results of your viewers because they're absolutely going to limit themselves, thinking that the minute they get a biceps vein, they must not be natural. The minute they get over 200 pounds, they must not be natural. You can do a lot naturally. And Revival, I think you missed one. I think there's an 11th, and it might be the biggest one of all. Anyone bigger than me is on steroids. Oh!